A tale of two wait lists. Wait lists? Like how important could wait lists be? But I want to share an interesting story. In fact, both of these are about stories. Let's get that clear that I have had no direct experience of either of these stories, but it's important. It's important to get that clarified because this first story about a waitlist was secondhand and it was from Boxing Day today. I was hanging out with my mother and my mother was a physiotherapist and she described a situation of a public hospital that had a very long wait list the physiotherapy department long wait list but the interesting thing was that there was not much work being done long wait list not much work what could be going on here well it was very interesting she said that despite having a 30 bed ward with room to see 30 patients at once there appeared to be not many patients maybe two and she noticed that as the patient came in and said, uh, got triaged. Hey, what's going on? They said, I got a sore neck. They said, how long has it been there? About six weeks. They said, great. It's not urgent. That's chronic. We'll make an appointment for you. The wait list is long. We'll see you in six weeks. Now, the interesting thing was that the patients that had shown up six weeks ago with their chronic conditions had an appointment for today and yet they did not show up. And so there was an appointment book that was full Patients that could have been seen today were seen in six weeks and nobody showed up. And you might think, well, how could this happen? But this happens because of an interesting thing. You know, the government looks at the problem as a wait list. They say, look at this wait list. It's so long, we've got to do something about it. You must need more budget. You must need more money. So we'll give you an increase in your budget so that you can resolve your wait list. And what they have done in that is to reward a wait list. So the wait list will never get shorter. Why? Because if they reduce their wait list, the budget will go down. The government in their infinite wisdom will say, oh, right, you are doing better. You have less of a wait list. We're going to give you less money. So the outcome of this is very little getting done for a lot of money being spent. Let's take a comparison to a second wait list. This is for a high-end hair salon, very high-end, $5,000 for three hours work. You're like, whoa, who would pay that much money? Well, many people would pay that much money because there is so much value. Why is there so much value? You see, that experience is part of who they are. It's who, how they live. It is a belief system within themselves that they are worthy of that, and that $5,000 is not much for them. There are many very wealthy people where you know, $5,000 on a hair experience, minimal. It's not much. The wait list for this is apparently also very long and could be extended quite happily. It could also be reduced by seeing more of the people on the wait list. That entire experience is booked out for the entire year. 2022, booked out. Why? Because the people that come, come every six weeks and they book out every session for the entire year. So unless they stop, one of them stops coming and one spot opens up, there will be no relaxation, no reduction at all on the wait list. And so the wait list will just get bigger. And should it happen that someone chose to leave the area or perhaps they died or perhaps they had to something else happen in their life, they lost all their money, there was some kind of catastrophe, there would be a long waiting list of people who would fill that instantly. They'd say, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. But notice that in that second experience, there is one great difference. And that is that the person doing the work is paid vastly higher. In the first experience, perhaps they might be paid $35 or $40 an hour for doing not very much. In fact, they are doing very little. And on the other side, $2,000 an hour, roughly if you include a tip. How can this be? How can this be? Well, it is based around value. There is no doubt about that. It's a, but it's more than that. It's about optimization of systems. 
you see both systems are optimized, but one is optimized for minimal work for maximum pay, and one is work idea is is idea about maximum pay for maximum work. Interesting, hey? Interesting. What the government in the first wait list fails to understand is that if you track the wrong optics, you will get the wrong decisions. This is what I want you to take out of these two stories. What you track as optics is critical. You see, both of these situations have wait lists, long wait lists that are unlikely to reduce anytime soon. The difference, though, is that one will never get better and the government is overpaying for people to do less and less. And while they continue to judge payments on wait lists instead of work done or value created, they will continue to struggle with this. But unfortunately, governments don't think in terms of value. Why? Because they just get to take the money in taxes. They have no investment in actually earning that money. All they do is take it and then spend it. This is a very different experience than you and me, where I must earn the money in the first place. I must provide value in order to make a transaction valuable to you. That my offer must present a solution to your problems that you're like, you know what, that is a great deal. That's what people buy. They buy a great deal. Or they buy a solution to their painful problems. And if you combine those two, then, then you have a highly successful wait list. You have a long list of people waiting for a service so that they can get in. This is documented beautifully in $100 million offers by Alex Homozi. I'd highly recommend that book. If you have not got that book, you should go and get that book. If you're in business, this defines a value proposition that is second to none. I have not seen anything like it. It's like, oh, wow. How can somebody charge $5,000? Why? Because the value proposition is so high that that still represents a extremely good purchase for that right person. This is not for everyone, there's no doubt about that, but for the right person, it is an extremely valuable offer for them to purchase and consume and be happy. So my question for you is, what optics are you focused on and are they telling you the right data so you can make better decisions? Take these two wait lists, one long wait list, wrong decision, one long wait list, right decision. Same metric, it just depends on what the decision is that must be made. Pay attention to what you are tracking, what optics you are looking at, and are they serving the decisions that need to be made for you to make more money in business and have a better quality of life and enjoy all that life has for someone like yourself. All right, that's all I got for you tonight. I hope you're having a great day. It's Boxing Day here in Australia. Heading into an interesting time. It's hot. If you're over in the Northern Hemisphere, then uh, of course it'll be cold, but it is hot, steamy. Sun is just setting right around 8.30 p.m. So beautiful night here. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. As we continue this journey into the power of system to create results, look forward to seeing you next time. See you then.